they had a policy opposing, um, this will sound familiar for those of you doing the um, extra credit paper, uh, unless they had a policy that opposed uh, smart on the internet, to, to paraphrase what the law said, uh, and that they installed each computer, public access computer, had to have installed on it um, filters that would block access by minors to, quote, visual depictions, not words, but visual depictions that are harmful to minors. None of this was defined at all. Visual depictions wasn't defined, and neither was harmful to minors. It was a pretty clumsy law. Uh, and it was challenged by the American Library Association and other groups. Uh, and the case, they won in the lower courts. And the case went to the Supreme Court, decided in 2003, in an opinion by then, uh, well, wait a minute here, um, in an opinion by then Chief Justice Rehnquist. Uh, and the rationale for the courts upholding the law was that this is a subsidy, that the government is simply using the spending power that it has under the Constitution uh, to support certain programs. Congress doesn't have to support um, internet access in schools or libraries, but Congress chooses to, and if it chooses to, it can attach strings to its subsidy. Here, if you want the money, uh, is what you have to do, and in this case, you have to have uh, filters on the computers that we, the government, are, are financing. Justice Rehnquist pointed out that, unlike the CDA and COPA, this is not a criminal law. This is not a law that carries the chilling effect of potential criminal prosecution if you utter the forbidden content. Uh, rather, it's just a condition on the funding that the government provides for schools and libraries. Um, on the question of overblocking uh, adult material, one of the justices asked during the oral argument, what if an adult goes to the library and wants access to some indecent material of the George Carlin variety, which is perfectly permissible and protected speech for adults to have access to, uh, and, and the filters are going to block it out. And the Solicitor General said to the court, don't worry about that. If an adult requests access to material that is blocked, the librarian will come running and disable the filter, unblock the material so that the adult, upon request, can get access to it. Well, under that fanciful um, reassurance, the, that attracted two votes for the 6-3 to three majority, uh, and uh, the, the statute passed muster. Um, I'm happy to say that the San Francisco Public Library uh, refused federal money because they refused to censor the material available on their public access uh, computers as a matter of principle. The city of San Francisco backed the library up with an ordinance uh, that um, basically said that the library should not be in the censorship business in any way. This whole business of filters um, has been somewhat confusing because the parties have switched sides from case to case. Uh, remember in the COPA case, the ACLU argued that filters were effective. They were a less restrictive means of achieving, actually achieving the government's goal because they were effective in screening out material that the government didn't want children to see. But the ACLU argued in the SEPA case, the library's case, that filters were ineffective and didn't do any good, but they censored protected speech. In one case they're saying the filters work and are an effective means of serving the government's interest. The other one says, not so. On the other hand, the United States government argued that filters were effective in the library case in screening out material that's harmful to minors, but that they aren't effective in the COPA case. Um, the criminal case, and that you need the criminal sanction. And the only player uh, in this game that has been consistent has been the court. And the court has said in each, at each opportunity that filters work reasonably well and they solve most of these problems. Uh, to its credit, the ACLU uh, harmonizes its position. Um, Ann Beeson, who handled these cases for the uh, ACLU, wonderful lawyer, um, said the question here is whose fingers on the mouse? The government's or the parents? She said when a parent installs a filter that keeps a kid from seeing a bunch of sites that may or may not be pornography, that's parenting. When government, force, government forces all adults and minors to use filters, that's censorship. In all of these cases that we've seen, um, going back to Pacifica, the government has asserted an interest in protecting America's children from exposure to sexual materials. And the court has unquestioningly, in each case, skipped over that and said, assume, agreed, that the government's interest is compelling for strict scrutiny purposes, they have a compelling interest in protecting America's children from sexual material. Um, without requiring any showing that this kind of material actually inflicts any harm on children at all. And I suppose you can't, as Justice Scalia uh, pointed out in the Fox television case, uh, I suppose you can't construct scientific, social science valid experiments using children where you've got one control group that is exposed to dirty pictures and one that is uh, shielded from them and then see whether the children who've been exposed to this behave in any different way or are psychologically wounded in some way from uh, having been exposed. So maybe you can't expect empirical evidence, but shouldn't there be something uh, that indicates that, other than the majority in Congress, the majority is distaste for um, the idea of exposing children to sexual material on the internet. Shouldn't there be something uh, that you can sink your teeth into in the way of reliable evidence uh, that this really does cause harm? The deference that the court has shown to the Congress on this issue um, is, uh, I think, problematic. Um, 
after all, it's not this, we're talking about material that's harmful to children. That rationale that the material causes harm is different from the rationale for obscenity. Obscenity is not illegal because it causes harm. That's never been the rationale. It's illegal because it's offensive. It's offensive to the standards of a civilized society. There's probably a qualification on why obscenity is prohibited, and that's the Catherine McKinnon, Andrea Dworkin view that was rejected in the American Booksellers case, remember, uh, where their view was that obscenity causes harm because it causes the subordination of women, um, both domestically and in relationships and in the workplace. Um, and so in that sense, obscenity causes harm, but it's only certain kinds of obscenity. That was what was wrong with the ordinance in Booksellers, obscenity that portrays women as enjoying being subordinate or being abused, uh, whereas obscenity, the most um, the crudest sexual images, uh, clearly obscene, are not illegal in their view, the McKinnon Dworkin view, if they portray women uh, as real human beings, not subordinate ones. Um, but the idea of uh, protecting America's children uh, from harm that hasn't really been proved is, I think, dangerous uh, to um, speech in general. And it would allow almost unlimited kinds of restrictions on speech, not on the speech of children, that's not the concern here, but on the speech of adults, in the name of protecting children from exposure to the material. Um, you know, you could have a newspaper decency act. If the idea is that the government has a compelling interest in protecting children from exposure to indecent material, why, why couldn't they have a newspaper decency act or a literature decency act? Or why couldn't they prohibit um, descriptions or depictions of violence the way the FCC wants to do or wanted to do um, on television, both in print or online or any place? Or how about profanity? I mean, don't children hear too much profanity and ape that? Well, they shouldn't be exposed to it. So profanity can be made illegal in the name of protecting children. It's just a, it's a concept without a limiting principle. Uh, and that's what makes it so uh, dangerous. Uh, to speech interests. The trial judge in the Copa case, after he had heard the government's evidence, uh, said that perhaps we do the minors of this country harm if First Amendment protections, which they will with age inherit, inherit fully, are chipped away in the name of their protection. I subscribe to that. Um, I'm going to quit early because I'm running out of gas and because I want to give time to pick up your papers. So uh, we'll finish up on Thursday with uh, the CPTA, Child Pornography in the Digital Age. Uh, and I have to leave time uh, for course evaluations on Thursday. So I'll see you then.